Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how to hook up your HP Tuners MPVI2 to your vehicle. I'll be using my 96 Jeep Grand Cherokee. This is the HP Tuners MPVI2. They also have pro features and an expander hub for use of different auxiliary inputs. You don't necessarily need it unless you're getting really fancy tuning. Um, a lot of people think you need it for the wideband, and for some widebands you do, but if your wideband has a serial out, you can hook it directly into the computer with the USB, and you can load it up. I've got a whole video on that. It's short and easy, but let's get to it. We're just going to plug this in, the OBD2 port. And then I've already opened this. This is HP Tuner's Beta. I, it might be available in regular VCM Editor. But right now it was in beta when I started doing this, so we're just going to go on with it. Turn your key on. We're going to read. We're going to read maybe. There we go. Now these things are kind of slow. Ignition off, wait three seconds. It puts it in like a diagnostic mode. This thing runs the fuel pump the whole time it does that. It's kind of annoying, but it's fine. Now, this is going to take the amount of time it says. It does take about four minutes of pop to read it and to write these things. So we'll tune out and we'll tune back in when it's done. Now, when you're done with all that, there's going to be a screen pop up right here, the same screen we were on. That's going to say done, cycle ignition, and you just shut the key off and you're good. This is the file I pulled out. Now, I've already tuned this thing several times, and it runs fine, but I guess I'll do a real quick go through the tables. I've already gone through them on another on another video, but now, someone asked me this on another, another video. They don't have EGR on these things, but there is an EGR off and an EGR on table. Now, I just go ahead and take this file and just copy the whole thing. And just right click, copy with access, and then I'll go over here, do this, and then paste it. I just make these the same. I do the same thing with the spark, with this right here. I do the same thing. Copy it, paste it on the EGR on. Does it matter? Probably not. I just do it. That way I know nothing weird can happen. There's no table change. It's the same, even though there is no EGR, and it should be impossible. So all that aside... Most of what you're going to play with is right here. This is this is your base fuel, EDR off or on, whatever. So whenever you're doing your data logs and you want to make a fuel change in one area, this is where you do it. Now, if you need to fatten up the whole thing just under wide open throttle, you can play in power enrichment tables. And there's thresholds for when it kicks in and out of power enrichment. I kind of went over that in the other video, so if you want to know more about that, check it out. But right here it's a percentage, it's a multiplier table. I've got mine just locked in at 14.84%. So when it goes to power enrichment, it's adding this much to it. And mine right now, I've got a Honda 1 3 quarter bar map sensor. It kicks in, I think I've got it kicking in right around 55 kPa or so. Yeah, it really depends on where you're at. But for the most part, when I'm on it, that's where it kicks in. Anything above that, it, it's in. Um, the spark tables, if you're going boosted, you, you can go a little bit harder on this factory, but keep in mind, I've got a Honda map sensor, so 105 kPa is not 105 kPa anymore. It's more like 11 pounds of boost. You have to tune these a little differently. Once again, watch that other video. I go through a good bit of stuff. Now, something I can do is I keep putting this off. Let's see. My warm up fuel. I want to warm it. General. This right here. Prime shot cranking. Fuel correction. 
Do, 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 do. I don't want to mess with this. I don't really need to mess with that. We'll go with time based. Right now, when you fire it up when it's cold, it'll run really, really rich for about 20 seconds. And that's probably because of this right here. So this is in Fahrenheit. So where this is for, I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna take this down. I'm gonna knock it down by. We'll take five percent. And to do that by five percent, we'll put 0.9 in here and multiply it. Now everything dropped. Or conveniently, it kind of fell in line with some other numbers. So I'll try that once it get, once it gets colder again, and hopefully that'll fix some of my issues. If it was map based or, or fuel table based or anything else, it would be you would have to adjust it somewhere else. But since it only it only does it for 10 to 20 seconds and then it's gone, that's this table right here. So that should fix that issue. I mean, 10 percent maybe that'll fix it. But if I have to pull more, that's where I'm gonna pull it at. I'm gonna hook the battery charger to this thing. And then we'll come back just because it runs the fuel pump the whole time and the battery was a little low when I moved it into the garage. So I'm going to get the battery charger hooked up and then we're going to flash it. Alright, we've got the battery charger hooked up. Now it's very important you keep this thing, keep the voltage up. Because if it, in the middle of the right, if it's towards the beginning, if it erases, if it, erases it and then your battery dies, there's a good chance you're going to turn your ECU into a brick. You don't want to play with anything whenever you've got it flashing. And reading, it's fine. It'll just fail to read. Writing, you could turn it into a brick. So don't play with anything. Just hit the button and don't even look at it. Funny. We're going to hit right. We're going to hit right again. It's going to tell us to cycle the key here in a second. key on and we're just going to hit OK and now it's going to be like another four minutes see where it says erasing that's that's what you don't want in the very beginning it erases part of its ability to communicate or something so if it if it craps out in the middle of this in the beginning of it I've had it do it halfway through and it's been fine only had that happen once so I've got lucky but from what I've heard, if it happens in the beginning of it, you got a brick because it won't write it again. All right, it's done. That's all you got to do. And close. And now we see if it starts. Now we'll see if it starts any better, but it's not really cold, so it shouldn't have any problems. Yeah, it's fine. That's it for this video. I had some people ask me some questions about JTEC, so I figured this would explain how to hook it up and just what JTEC was. It's just a factory operating system in your Jeep. And the, the MPVI2s are about 250 bucks. It only takes one credit. Now, I didn't go through purchasing that credit because I've already done that. I can't go back and do it again. Whenever I do a new vehicle, whenever I do my Sierra, I'll do that because eventually I'm going to turbo that thing and there's going to be lots of videos on that too but it's still a little down the road we got more to do with the Jeep but, uh, everyone that subscribed thank you anyone that hasn't hit the button Boy, thank you for watching